Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part four of building Robot Iron Spider-Man, the real robot. And this is built on my Robot X platform, which is a real walking, talking robot that we're building different sci-fi characters on. We've already put Bender from Futurama on it. And now we're doing an Iron Spider-Man build, which is basically a robotic Spider-Man full of animatronics and so on. So last time we actually had this walking around, waving its arms. I did the electronics integration for the head and the arms into the remote so we can move them at the same time. And basically it can walk around and do some sort of uh, test poses and so on. Um, we've already got blinking eyes and a head that moves around, but we need to put more Spider-Man stuff in. So this time I'm gonna concentrate on one arm and make a really good web shooter. So what I want is an animatronic arm that can basically turn, do the web shooting thing, a thing pop out of the forearm, and a web shoot out. So that's what's gonna happen in this video. Towards the end of the last video, I attached these little boxes to the uh, forearms you can see here, and this is just so we can see what length the arm should be. That in fact's all of the forearm there, so it should be about right to have a wrist and a hand on that comes some sort of halfway down the thigh, just like a human. But obviously with the hand on, it doesn't leave us very much space. Uh, to put a web shooter in and we've got to make that rotate as well. So my current thinking is we're going to replace that plate on the end of the sort of elbow stub there and we're going to fit a servo in with a gear attached and that's going to run a big gear which turns the forearm and this is the same ratio we had on the head. So if you remember we've got um, the servo does about 180 degrees, it's roughly just under a 2 to 1 so we get nearly 90 degrees on the head there. In fact the servo normally does more than 180 so I think we get 90 which means this box will be to turn on its side. So it will start facing inward and then basically flip round so we can see the inside of what would be the wrist. Um, however, we haven't got much space in here for a web shooter. We've only got about 65 mil. So I need to make that a bit longer. The hand and wrist should be here, but that's actually fine because Spider-Man's web shooter is part of his wrist and his palm. So we can extend into the hand a bit, which isn't going to do much else. I've extended that box out now so that it's actually quite a bit longer and it goes into the palm of the hand and the red part here is uh, what would be the palm so the fingers will be attached straight on the end of that. Uh, both of those things are articulated of course so let's just move the whole thing round. So the whole forearm can rotate like this so it will typically start like this facing the robot and then when it wants to shoot a web it rotates round so that the inside faces upward and the palm of the hand there will also flip downward slightly like that and we want the middle fingers to flip up over onto the palm as much as they can probably controlled by the same servo in the same motion. So here's a bit more of the palm I've got uh, places to put the fingers here the thumb is going to be stuck on the outside so three, three uh, hinges here for four fingers in the four gaps so the palm of course will hinge back about this point and then we're going to have uh, levers that come through these gaps to the middle fingers uh, which are linked to this piece here so that's uh, going to cause them to hopefully fold back and the servo that operates the whole thing is going to live on the back of here and come to a linkage that goes in this gap so I think there's going to be a, a plate that covers the whole thing I'll put on later but for now that should be covered and that should operate with one servo. So I actually want to print this thing first and we'll see how it looks before we try and print this piece and work out all of the leverage angles. So we've got the main parts of the hand assembly printed, there are some gears and things we need to fit and that plate for the servo, but we've mainly got the uh, actual palm and the wrist here, so uh, this is the back of the hand and looking at this side this is going to be the palm of the hand, so eventually the thumb will be stuck on that side, it's the left hand. The hands are pretty big but then the head is pretty big and the feet are going to be pretty big, so I didn't want to end up with really small hands but they're getting on for being bigger than my hands. That does give me scope for the other hand to put some more accessories in or perhaps have working fingers, haven't decided yet. But uh, basically when it wants to shoot a web it's going to flick its palm back like that. And to do that we're going to install a servo on the back of the hand that pulls into this leverage point. We still need to keep the hand uh, completely empty there for the web shooter, which is why the servo is on the back, but we will have um, a kind of big hand back cover thing that's part of the forearm that goes over that. Once we've got that servo in, then we can work out the leverage point for these fingers to pull against here to hopefully flip them around as much as we can into the middle of the palm. So I actually decided to do that the other way around and start with the fingers. So we'll have the fingers on there with the little levers that cause them to move at the right angle, then we'll put the servo on. So uh, basically I've put some joints here in Fusion 360, so what we'll have is the... Uh, 
hand flick down there to about 30 degrees and we want the fingers, the middle two at least, to come round to about 100, 105 degrees to the centre of the palm. Obviously the thumb will be sticking out as well in that typical Spider-Man web shooting pose. And obviously that leaves clearance for something to pop out of the palm here and a web to shoot off this way, hopefully missing the fingers. So I'm going to get my uh, fingers printed there. They're basically, the middle ones are already slightly more bent, but apart from that they don't have any other joints. They only hinge here. They don't have any other finger joints like Ultron did, for instance, but I think that's going to be all right. So we'll get those printed, get them installed, put a uh, link in from there to there, and then we'll see what angle this needs to move to to make those work properly. But I think it's about 30 degrees. Okay, so I've printed all my fingers, I've also added the levers there, so, and the servo on the back in fact, so now if we move this, the hand comes back, and the middle two fingers come right forward there, like Spider-Man shooting his web, we need to stick the thumb on, and uh, that seems to work pretty well, hopefully. There we go, um, it's getting quite big though, and um, proportionally next to the robot, it seems absolutely massive, even though I'd intended it to be bigger, I think that that's too big. Well, I might get away with it, but it's actually really long. It comes down, well, not to the knee, but about halfway down the thigh. And obviously we've got that intermediate gear stage to go in, so it's gonna be even longer. And uh, when the hand's up, it's gonna sit somewhere there. It does look absolutely huge compared to his head, for instance. So I decided I'd make um, a smaller one, which I've got right here. Here it is. So uh, compared to that one, it is in fact quite a bit shorter. It's also quite a lot more dainty. I've made all the things a bit thinner. We'll have a closer look in a minute. But I think that's a better size there. Comes up to the top of the thigh, a bit like a human. The fingertips probably reach just above halfway down. And it's also much lighter. So here are the two side by side. Obviously uh, this one's got thinner and slightly shorter fingers. And basically it's much shorter in the actual hand. And I've also made the hand piece here much skinnier. So there's not just these massive chunks of plastic existing there for not many reasons. Um, I've also used a smaller servo for this one. So instead of having this giant servo on the back, I've used one of these, which hopefully will stand up to it. I'd rather use one with metal gears. This one is plastic, but uh, hopefully that's capable of doing exactly the same pose there and pulling those middle fingers forward. So uh, we'll have to see how that goes when we power it up. I've only taped it on for now so we can change it for a more powerful one in the future. So of course the aim of having this hole in here is to put a web shooter in so when uh, Spider-Man does his spidey pose he shoots out a web which pops out. So I need to think of a way of uh, something that goes in there and springs out with a spring and pulls a string behind it. First of all I need to find a spring from somewhere. Pretty sure there's some springs in one of these containers. Uh, I think it's this one. Yes, it's the old totally nuts snake in a pot trick that everyone's seen now, so no one is fooled by it. So now it's going to go and have a second life as a Spider-Man web shooter. So we're going to take all this kind of uh, plastic off here, get the spring out, and we're going to make a spring launcher that fits in here. Hopefully we'll get it to pull a string as well. So we're going to need to make a long stick that goes up the middle of this so we can compress it down uniformly. So we can bunch it up over a stick and that can then fit into the hand and somehow it levers out and when it gets to the end, obviously it shoots out. Right, so here's a 3D printed uh, tube thing I've made or a cylinder there and we can put that on. It feels pretty tight, not sure how far it's going to shoot off. Well, that seems to work. So now we just need to put this on a hinge so it fits inside and then a servo or something can push it out and hopefully the spring will shoot off. Right, so I've made a mount for that blue part, if we just get rid of the main box there, and we can see that's kind of this grey L-shaped bracket. And um, that basically has some pivot points at the back, which I can glue in and adjust. Um, I've left them open so I can actually push this in, and it can all come out so I can get to the servo below. And we've also got this curve section, which um, basically tracks that pivot point. So as the thing um, hinges up, it tracks the curve, and the spring is always pushed onto the end of the cylinder. So we'll get those printed, and hopefully we can manually fit the pivot point in by gluing it on either side, and get that placement exactly correct. So I've printed and fitted those parts and we can see we've got the pivot blocks and we've got this piece that pivots up. So let's stick the spring on and we'll see if that works properly. So 
So my spring is loaded in there and obviously the servo will push it, but for now I'll just do it manually. So the hand will flick back. So we need to check it misses the fingers and then this should fire. Yep, that seemed to work okay. So inside there's a servo with a long lever, which is gonna push the pivot out and obviously that just snaps into those brackets. I put a little tab on the side there so it uh, gets caught by the lever and that should lever it upwards. So here is the complete hand assembly. So uh, we've got that uh, thing there for the fingers, of course. And what's gonna happen is, of course, it'll be this way round. So we've got the gears attached now. And when we activate it, the hand will go this way. The fingers will pull into Spider-Man web shooting pose, and then this will pop up and out will shoot the web. So let's attach that to the robot and get it wired up. Right, so I've attached the hand. Um, I think it looks pretty well proportioned. It seems to come to the right place on the thigh. It's maybe tiny, marginally too long, but uh, maybe I've just been used to looking at the robot with no arms on for too long. So um, obviously it can tilt up like this and it can turn this way and we've got all the other functions in the shoulder. So I need to wire all these servos in now and integrate it with the electronics so we can aim it and then shoot the web. Just sorting out the wiring loom for those servos. So I've got three servo connectors. They've got shared power that go off to a pair of wires and another wire each for the PWM for each individual servo. So those servos are connected to some pins on the Arduino on the back that controls Spider-Man's head and that's because it's a specific Spider-Man feature and not a general purpose robot piece. It's specific to this character. And again, the power comes from the regulator that power the head servos and I think that should be enough power. The other end of the servo wires are dangling down by the arm here, ready to be plugged in as I set them up one by one and I've glued the other ends of the servo connectors to the arm so they're not just waving around and they don't get stuck in the gears. I've implemented some Arduino code in the Arduino that looks for a second button press on the um, remote called Button 2 and it's got flags and timers so the code is multitasking and the rest of the loop still runs which means the head still functions and the um, existing arm control functions and basically this just sequences the servos through looking at time, checking the flag, incrementing it each time so starting with 0, turning it to 1, checking the time and the flag equal to 1, turning it to 2, checking the flags equal to 2 and the time's expired and going through and writing these servos each time to uh, move them in a sequence. So that basically rotates the wrist, does the firing pose, and uh, basically lastly ejects the spring and then puts them back again, um, all the way back to zero, which are these last two here. So let's see what that looks like in real life. In the long term, I need to sort out some motion smoothing because you can see the arms are a bit jittery. Now it's got that extra load on, but I've basically got the previous arm and head demo so I've mapped all my controls there so his arms move around and those are on my stick on the remote. So now, um, in fact, uh, I've got a button which activates this hand. So let's just see if I can move that forward a bit. I'm going to aim it that way a little bit so we don't hit the camera. And then I press a button on the remote. Oh, and there goes the spring. And then he puts his arm away again. And that seems to work pretty well. Obviously the eyes still work there as well. And you should be to see a little bit of movement in the head. I probably need to sort out the mapping there, uh, which matches the arms. But will it be able to fire a string like a spider web? I've tied a string to the spring there and I'm just gonna repack the spring. And we'll see if that's able to uh, actually fire that string out any distance or whether there's too much drag. There we go, so we're just gonna coil that up as well and pop that in there. You'll probably do with a sort of cone uh, shaped thing for this, which is what you're supposed to have. Uh, but for now, that will have to do. Right. Let's uh, try and move that arm forward. Let's go that way a little bit. Let's try and go right past the camera. No, it got jammed on the string. Right, it's take two. I've called the string up on the opposite side, not where the servo lever was, which is probably the mistake. Uh, let's see what happens this time, so... Yep, that worked, and the string flew away as well, so maybe I should tie the other end down. Right, I'm holding on to the other end of the string now, so I'm going to just see if it can actually fire the string and what happens, so we're just uh, going to do that. Uh, yes, it would have worked if it didn't get caught on his fingers that time, so yeah, I think if we can uh, coil the string up well enough, that should be pretty good. So now I've tied off the string to uh, the, his hand, in fact, to his thumb joint. I probably should uh, put something in specifically for it. 
But uh, let's see if that works. Oh yes it does. Great, so that seems to work pretty well. So I don't know if you can just see that, the spring ended up here. Uh, the string's a little bit cool around the spring, but most of it did actually um, spread out okay. So it's not a very long, uh, long string there. Spider-Man's only just standing there, but I'm pretty happy with that. It's better than silly string at least. I think what I'll have in the future is some cosmetic panels when I come to do the cosmetics for the arms, and we'll have, of course, a button in the palm there, which covers this mechanism, which is the thing that Spider-Man presses to launch the web, and we'll have a sort of panel over here, so we'll have plenty of space there to build in a string um, holder. So we should have, really, as I say, a cone shape that this is um, kind of neatly packed round and it gets thinner at the end and then it deploys properly, but it seems to work all right just coiling it up, so we could just have a place in the palm inside, where the string is kept. But that works all right for now. Right, so that's the end of the episode. I'm really glad I've managed to make a web shooter that works, um, even if it does fire a spring and it does fire a string, which isn't more like an actual spider web than using silly string or something like that. The other hand is gonna have something else in it. I'm not sure what, not a web shooter. I quite like to have a drone that flies out or something, but I haven't decided yet, so we're gonna do that in the future. Next time, I'm not sure what we're gonna do. I think I'm gonna put guns in the shoulders and try and build up some of the back panel, but you'll have to wait and see what that is. So don't forget to subscribe for more updates on this project and all the other projects. And also, it's really important to say that all my projects are funded through Patreon. So have a look at patreon.com slash xrobots and you can get access to some exclusive rewards, including a live stream with me, all my videos early, and also almost daily sneak peeks and pictures of upcoming projects and the discussion that goes with them exclusively on my Patreon wall. All right, that's all for now.